I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be why women prefer to chase men. Believe it or not, women, how they're made up, how they're raised, how they go about seeking love and reassurance from their fathers when they're little girls, tells you, if you can understand that dynamic and that pattern, you can use it to your advantage to get the women that you're dating to chase and pursue you. And like I talk about in all my articles, it's always better if a woman is chasing you. I mean, a scientific fact is, is that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. And so when you look at Let's you look at little girls. How how what happens when they stub they fall down and they scuff up their knee? They usually go crying to their daddy and they sit in his lap and they cry for a little while and he rubs it, kisses it. You know, let's let's say that she fell down and her knee's just real red. It really didn't break the skin or nothing. But yet she's sitting in his lap having a meltdown about what just happened. And if he, he listens to her, he lets her talk and communicate her feelings, and he, he lets her cry and get it out, and he kisses her little boo-boo, which is not really a boo-boo, and she's like, thanks, Daddy, and she gets up, and she goes prancing around the room, and just like nothing ever happened, she's laughing and giggling three minutes later, when three minutes before, she's bawling out, bawling her eyes out. And so what is that all about? And when you look at how they, it's like, Maybe that's that's just one thing and they get hurt or they go to school or there is a boy at school that they're having a problem with. It's they always go back to sitting in daddy's lap for daddy's reassurance and daddy's love. Now, I'll give you an example. Years ago, one of my former girlfriends, when when her daughter was really little, I think she was like six or seven, we went over to the coast and we stayed. We had a beach house and or a beach condo or something like that. And so we were, it was hot, it was the middle of summer, and we were hanging out in the pool during the day. And, you know, the adults were having some beers and, and grilling out and having a good time. And I remember I was, like, standing in the middle of the pool, and the water probably came up to, like, here on me. And so I had my beer in one hand. And she keeps, you know, her, my girlfriend's daughter keeps getting out of the water, going over this side of the pool, and then jumping into my arms, and not so much like jumping in my eyes, it's kind of like falling in like right here. So I would catch her and hug her and embrace her and then kind of push her over towards the side of the pool again where she'd climb back up the ladder. And she, I mean, she did this like dozens and dozens of times, all just the same look, like the 50th time that she did it. Obviously, like my arms were dead tired at this point, but she just didn't get tired of it. And this, you know, her actual, her real father was never really around very much. And so obviously when I was dating her mother, I basically filled in as the father figure. And I remember at the time that she was doing this, because like I'd go over to her house, you know, like if she was at her grandparents' house, and I'd sit down and she'd come over. If I had like one of my legs crossed, she'd take the leg that was crossed and pull it off and then just sit down on my lap. And she was always like that. She always wanted to be held, always wanted to be loved. She'd go play around, ride her bike or whatever. And I'd maybe talking with her grandmother or her mom, just hanging out, shooting the shit. And then a few minutes later, after she's riding around, she comes back into the garage. And then she sits down on my lap for a little bit, asks a question or two or three. And then she hops up and goes and starts riding her bike around. And I remember one time I, I, I pulled up, I was taking her... To, to Disney World for the day. It was one of her favorite places to go. And so as I was walking up towards the garage, you know, and the, uh, on my way over there, she's calling me every few minutes, are you close? Are you almost here? You know, wanting to know where I was because she was so excited to see me. And then so I get out of my car and then, you know, the garage door is open. And so she comes out of the, the door from the kitchen that goes to the garage. And as I start to walk towards her, she goes, stop wait you know she puts her hands hands up like this with a big smile on her face and so i stopped and then you know she like <laughs> kind of like in a cartoon where they they rear back and they start running so she ran at me like really fast and i could tell what she was she just wanted to jump into my arms and have that experience of being swept up by that 
masculine father figure and that was a really sm sweet moment for me and I remember it like it was yesterday but you know, I just picked her up and I held her and I hugged her and gave her a big kiss and we had a great day together and when you look at and you understand that di that's basically what little girls do and so how does this apply when they become adults and have adult relationships with men well it's they do the same thing because women are going to be more attracted to you if they're unsure of where they stand with you. And you don't want to, obviously, you don't want to chase a woman. And if you've used some of the techniques like I talk about where you've given out your phone number or maybe you've been out on two or three dates and now this, this girl is starting to call you, like say you had a date on Monday night and then by Wednesday she's calling you or texting you or, or maybe Tuesday the next day. She texts you to tell you what a great time she had. And what you got to look at is that when women, when little girls grow up and they become women, they seek the males, the, whoever they happen to love or care about or they're in a relationship with, they seek that masculine presence. They want to be penetrated by your love, your presence. They want to be penetrated by you physically, emotionally, mentally spiritually and so when a woman calls you or she sends you a text or she emails you or she sends you an instant message you should look at that as that in a way she's doing what she used to do to her father when she was a little girl and now she's doing that to you she's making herself available so you'll facilitate getting together either setting another date or inviting her to come over or whatever it happens to be. And once you get in that pattern, you know, it's like what I do is women just from the moment I meet, they pursue me, they start calling me, they start texting me just because I make it safe and comfortable and easy for them to do that. And so what happens is that when you 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 set a woman up properly by interacting with her properly and making her feel safe and comfortable, she won't think anything of it sending you a text or calling you. And you got to remember, as she's sitting at home or she's talking to her girlfriends and she starts to wonder about you or the both of you or where it's going or she thinks about you, she's going to text you. And you got to take advantage of that opportunity as using it to just set the next date or the next time that you get together and then get off the phone. And then in between the time you set the date until you pick her up for your date or you meet her out for your date, She's going to be thinking about you. If she's thinking about you, it's causing your interest level to go up. And plus, by allowing her to do this, it allows her to interact with you on the same way that she interacted with her father when she was a little girl. She thinks about you. She wants that love, that masculine reassurance and presence. And so she'll call you, text you, or send you an email. So you will arrange that meeting. Now, if you were just to say... To talk to her and then get off the phone without inviting her out for a date or say you know facilitating getting together and then you just hang up the phone then she's going to be really hurt and upset because then she's going to feel like you don't care about her and women look at what you do not so much what you say and so when she call, contacts you to make it easy for you to set up the next date or the next meeting or the next get together or invite her over and then you don't, she's going to feel rejected. And when a woman feels rejected or she doesn't feel loved, that's when they get bitchy. And obviously that's your signal to know that you did something to piss her off or hurt her. And then obviously you need to get to the bottom of it. So it's a great dynamic to understand that because as a man, if you start chasing and pursuing a woman, you're going to, you're going to remember she's been doing this since she was a little girl. And so she's She's conditioned herself, she's practiced, she's basically her whole life been taking action towards the man, the strong central male figure in her life. And so when she grows up to an adult, she just naturally has conditioned herself to continue doing the same thing. It's really powerful. And if you understand it and you employ it and you use it, women will always chase you and you just never want to interfere in that dynamic because it ruins attraction if you do. If you chase women, you're in essence acting like a woman. And that's why when you chase women, you get rejected. 
And so if you find this message of value, you can show your appreciation by going down to the Wibia toolbar, which is on the bottom of your screen if you're watching this video on my website, and click the PayPal Donate button and donate any amount that you feel is equal to the value of the information in this video. At the very least, please share this page with all your friends and family by clicking any one of the social network sharing buttons, which are also located on the Wibia toolbar at the bottom of your screen. And if you've got a question that you want to ask, or there's a topic that you want me to cover in a future video newsletter, click on the Contact Me tab, which is on the left-hand side of your screen, and send me three or four paragraphs detail on your situation, and give me a couple days to get back to you with a detailed response. Because i got to get to my paid phone coaching customers first, and once I've taken care of those, then I'm able to get to the you know all the emails that I get from the Internet. And if you want to talk to me personally, if you'd like to book a paid phone coaching session with me so I can help you with your specific situation or challenge, click the Products tab, which is at the top of your screen, and just follow the instructions. And I'll talk to you soon.